<clears throat> hey good people Kamanisha she beats motivation today is about dreams and more specifically keeping your dreams your visions your goals to yourself i believe in writing down dreams i believe in writing down goals i believe in vision boards i believe in all that what i have learned over the years where i have built businesses and i have come up with ideas that everyone is like that's crazy that's stupid that'll never sell that'll never work and i found out that it actually stopped me like from doing some things especially if you go to people who are successful before you are who have already reached that goal or that dream or that level a place that you think you want to be at for happiness like when you tell them and then they kind of like mm, that's not it you know it kind of makes you say well if this millionaire or if this successful ceo or if this five-time you know best book writer or whatever has said no that's not a good book idea or no that's not a good product to come out with or no it will discourage you and it and it has discouraged me before but i found out those same products that same thing that i just couldn't shake I, you know when you when you're laying down in the middle of the night after you hear that no from someone that you just you feel like not only do you want their opinion but you respect their opinion and if nothing else you think that they will support you but it turns out like they're like no that's not it and it can do something to your spirit and you don't want to open another distraction you don't want to allow another distraction i know it sounds so selfish and skittish and scary to say oh i just got to do everything by myself like i can't i can't tell anybody about what i want to do or what my dream is like i can't tell anybody no you can't you can't because if they don't understand then they're gonna say no and it's your dream so they always say let me tell you something the the number one thing to like a very valuable product a very valuable business is finding a problem that has not been solved and solving it so an example would be um black hair products nothing against my caucasian women love them to death got plenty of them in my life but i'm, I'm just trying to give an example so black hair products it was a shortage it was it, it was you know dom the hair industry is was dominated by white culture for a long time it was only products for them you know we didn't start seeing products for us until carol's daughter until aunt jackie's until um tali kwani or i can't pronounce it but it's like tali kwani and stuff like that we didn't start seeing that until 10 years ago at the earliest you know if uh, products for my hair texture would not be out there the white man did not make products for me so carol's daughter which is a group which is a company not a group sorry seeing a need seeing a problem seeing that african-american women who have beautiful hair and have natural coarse hair but we have beautiful curls if they're moisturized right we have beautiful texture if it's done right and we have the right products she saw the problem that we were missing it and created a created a product out of her house like everyone thinks you have to be out like at this multi-level you know i gotta have a factory i need to have 10 people i need to have baby let me tell you to start a business you need a couple of business cards a good social media and about 200 dollars. because my first business that's what i had so look you don't need all that but my point is she saw the problem she created a um a solution to what the problem was now do you think 
that the lady who invented Carol's daughter product, do you think if she would have went to, I just want to name a good one. Let's say Paul Sebastian or BioSilk. I remember back in the day, BioSilk was a good product that would work on our hair. But hell, it was like $26 for a little bottle. And I'll tell my age, I'm 38. So my mom was buying BioSilk when I was, what, 14, 15 years old. And at that time, $26 is a lot of money. But that was the only thing that would work on my hair. You know, so, but still it wasn't a black product. So that, so my point is you can find something, but she saw the problem and she fixed it. So if you, do you think that if this black woman went to this white company and said, Hey, I got some products for some sisters so we can bring out the natural texture of their hair so we can do this. Do you think she did that? I'm pretty sure she did. I'm pretty sure she went to a lot of people knowing that she would get denied. I'm pretty sure that plenty of companies was like, no, we're not interested. We're making enough money off our people. We're not trying to help y'all do anything or whatever the challenges was. So what she did is she started out of her house and made some home recipes and from that built this multi-million empire that now is for us and has provided a solution and in the problem was the solution and the solution made it valuable to all the consumers that have hair like me which are millions and she is who she is my point is I'm pretty sure someone told her, nope, that's not going to work. Um, I've had plenty of issues. I've had plenty of really, really damaging, like distracting, like blow to my ego. I'm talking successful businesses that I have created and... When I first told people about it, they were just like, no, 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 you're stupid. No, that doesn't make sense. No, no one's going to buy it. And I had to believe in myself. And it was, for me, it wasn't even about the money. That's what, that's what's so crazy. Like most of the things I do is not about the money. Most of the things I do is about to improve people's self-perception of their self, to build their image. It's a lot of exercising products. It's a lot of mental you know aspiring and all these type of growing a greater life products like I, i'm not trying to sell like acrylic nails here like i'm trying to sell stuff that is going to change people's life and when you hear no from people who are close to you especially especially like family like if you tell your husband, honey, I got this great idea, da, 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 and he's like, no, that's going to do something to your spirit. That's going to be like, maybe it is stupid, or if he doesn't believe in me, or if he thinks it's dumb, everybody else is going to think it's dumb. I've had my, my own mother love her to death, you know, and sometimes we have to realize, like, the generations are different. Like, back in the day, my mom is, what, 69, so... She think different, you know, like she doesn't even really believe in college. She, she, she wanted me to like work my way to the chop the way she did. You know, she was a successful regional bank branch manager, a uh, bank manager. And we had a very great life. And it was just like, I work my way to the top and that's what you should do. Like school is just going to have you in debt, which is true. Moms know. And you still, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And that's so true. And even though those things were all true i still wanted to go to school but she didn't understand that and so i went to school and yeah I, i've had some great jobs and stuff but at the end of the day i still wanted to be like an entrepreneur my own person but i remember telling my mom about 
um, the waist bead business that I had where I wanted to make waist beads and the waist beads were really like slimming beads to kind of keep your stomach sucked in and, and stuff like that. And it was actually something that she taught me to tie a string around my stomach and keep your stomach sucked in to have good posture because she was always about good posture. And so everyone always complimented me about my posture, my flat stomach, even though I was a little thicker. And... I told them I just keep my stomach in and I stand up straight. So I was like, what if I came up with some beads, mom, that incorporated your idea of the string, you know? And her first response was, well, first of all, you, you selling my idea. You shouldn't even tell nobody how you're able to, you know, keep a flat stomach and keep good posture. And I'm like, why not? Like... People are dying. People are having illnesses. Like, I see a lot of people, like, hunched over. Like, why not help someone? And so, once I start making the beads, and then, you know, you have to know your worth. And, you know, it just wasn't kicking off at first because my own mom, that I was picking off, piggybacking off of her idea, told me, no, don't do that. That's, that's dumb. You know what I'm saying? So, I did it. And... It blew up. It took off. It was me, my spouse that said it wasn't all that. My mom said it wasn't all that. Went to <laughs> me making five bees and hustling to my spouse getting off of work. And we're up to four o'clock in the morning because I got orders from drill team companies, praise dance companies, AliExpress, Amazon. I'm talking everybody wanted some bees i couldn't make them fast enough and so uh, no one you know it took off and if i would have listened to the people who are now on your bandwagon who are now on my bandwagon that's what's so hilarious it's like and it's no shade to them it's just me keeping it real with y'all you know what i'm saying like i know my mom might see this video my spouse might see this video and be like you real wrong for throwing us under the bus like that but it's true and i have to be truthful because it might be your spouse or your mom or your dad saying that idea is stupid that book will never sell nobody's gonna buy your lotion nobody's gonna buy your candles nobody has anything to hear from you you're a recovering crackhead how can you tell somebody how to stay off of drugs you're the one that can tell somebody how to stay off the drugs you're the one that can tell somebody that it's a spirit that you can overcome you're the one that can tell a person step by step the struggle it'll be to get off crack like only people who have experienced stuff that they're trying to give you information about is the only people that you should be taking it from. Why wouldn't you listen to a crackhead that wrote a book? Why wouldn't you understand the parallels of that first time they took that hit to when they lost their job, their homeless, their friends, their family, and didn't get help until they was on their deathbed? Why wouldn't you read that? Why wouldn't you take advice from that? So, my point is, you have to keep... <laughs> your dreams your vision to yourself like sometimes and i know you might be saying oh, what if it's too big what if i want to start my own cooking company or i want to start my own something that's going to be like in your house taking up a lot of space because you might not have the overhead or the money the extra money right now to do it on a, a, a grander scale so let's say you want to make cookies and you you know you got bomb cookies and everybody need a good cookie honey so Let's say you got this kitchen and you're cooking cookies every day and you're really trying to hustle it up and you really don't want to make too much noise about what you're doing in the house or have anybody else's opinion. You know, I'm not saying lie. I'm just saying you don't have to tell all your business. Just say, oh, I'm just trying a couple of recipes or I'm cooking some stuff for people at work and, you know, or I'm just passing them out or I'm just dibbling and dabbling here. You don't have to tell anybody, like, I'm trying to start a cookie business and it's going to blow up and everybody going to be my cookies and I'm going to have a cookie franchise. No, keep it to yourself because I'm telling you, you will be disappointed. You... 
someone will tell you your idea is stupid and I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how successful you have been in other places of your life. When someone tells you that your dream, your vision, your passion, whatever you want, your goals are stupid or worthless, you receive that even when you don't want to receive it. And you're going even if, even if you can fight it later on, you will receive that and it will slow you down. And you cannot allow anybody to slow you down. So, to prevent that whole hindrance, what we do is we don't tell our business. We keep our vision to ourselves. God says, what you pray to me in secret, I will reveal to you openly. That's what I love, not to get off the subject, and I'll probably make this my next video, about fasting. I think it's a secret power in fasting. The Bible says you you know, you need to fast, meditate, pray, you know, and I've just gotten into fasting for the spiritual part of it. I've always did it for the weight loss part of it. Um, I come from a fasting family, but I'm telling you, when I really need to be in a creative process and I really need to zone out and I really need to just stay connected, I would do a 24-hour fast. I will do a three-day fast. My goal one day is to do a 40-day fast. I have not made it there, but that is my goal. But it's, it's almost the same principle as fasting. It's like, okay, I'm fasting. I'm not telling anybody. I'm doing this for spiritual growth. I'm doing this for a thankfulness fast. I'm doing this for, you know, to come clean. And I'm just going to stop talking about fasting, but because I, I just make a whole fasting video, but... What I'm saying is the same results you get from fasting, like when no one knows and they're like, and you just see all these blessings come. It's the same thing about your vision and your goal and your dream. Because the thing about visions and goals is that everyone is here for a purpose. Everyone is designed to do something. You are the only person that can do what God has put you here to do. So I believe that God has already given you that vision. I don't think that I just came up one day and said, oh, let me make some way speech. Oh, let me be a motivational speaker. Oh, let me make people laugh and be a comedian. Oh, let me make waist trainers. Oh, let me, no, no, I think God puts that vision in your head and you run with it. And so, Whatever it is that's keeping you up at night, whatever it is in the back of your head, whatever it is that you dream about, and someone has said, don't, mm -mm, mm -mm. it's too late to go back to school. It's too late to get your degree. You 40, you can't be no doctor. You got to go to school for 12 years. You don't know how long I'm going to live. You don't know what I'm becoming a doctor for. Maybe God has put it in my heart to become a doctor for something that has happened to me. And I might come up with the next cure to something else. Like, you don't know your purpose until you're in your purpose. And no one else knows your purpose. So there's no reason for you to involve them. They don't need to be involved. They don't. You don't need no sponsor. You don't need no startup money from no outside person. You need you. I started my first business with $200. $200. So, you don't need that. You just need to believe in you. Follow through. Invest every day. Make a progressive step towards your vision and your goal every day. And you will be successful. And keep people out your business. And that's all I got to say. Keep your vision to yourself.